Molly, 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 Nari, Tommy, Tommy, Tommy. What song? What a result? What a Ryder Cup! And uh, I'm a bit late with this one. It's Monday evening, but I don't think we can go and not discuss a little 10 minute video about what just happened over the Ryder Cup weekend. I get a lot of people who watch this channel from uh, across the pond, some great supporters of the channel from over in the USA, so really relevant to you people out there and love to hear your opinion on your thoughts on the way this all panned out this weekend and obviously plenty of people across the UK, Ireland and Europe who watch the channel as well, so again, want to, love to hear your feedback. But we've, let's start with the results. Um, it was it 17 and a half, 10 and a half, was it in the end? Does that make sense? Whatever. It was an unbelievable weekend and one that I made a joke last week that uh, after my prediction that Tiger would never get, never win again, I said, I said that uh, Europe would not win either on the hope that, fingers crossed, it uh, backfired again. All seriousness, on paper, I definitely thought Americans were favourites to win. It seems to be on a lot of occasions when we go into the Ryder Cup, that seems to be the case, but it doesn't always pan out in terms of the result. But this time round, I think it's widely been commented that this was possibly the strongest USA team on paper that there has ever been. It was packed with um, all kinds of qualities that I honestly believe were gonna be just too much for Europe. Um, with all due respect to them, and was I wrong massively? Was I surprised massively? Even so much as the captain's picks, once again, um, I, and I, I, you know, I never mind admitting when I get something wrong and having an opinion on something, I love it. But again, Garcia, I probably, if it was in my shoes, would I have picked Garcia? No, I wouldn't. Um, I, I, I don't try and claim otherwise. I'm gonna shuffle some papers here because I wanna go through some numbers. But Garcia, unbelievable performance. Uh, but what I wanna do is I just wanna go through the two teams and I wanna, I'll give you my rating and we'll discuss about where it was won or lost and what quite went wrong, mainly obviously for the American team and how they possibly look to change things moving forward. So lots of opinions I'm looking for on this one. But I'm gonna start off with the, first of all, the point one and the score that I would rate them out of 10 in terms of performance for each of the players on both teams. We're gonna start with the American team first. I'm gonna start off with, I'm gonna start with Bryson DeChambeau. Zero points return, didn't do a great deal, and in the singles yesterday, um, again, couldn't get that over the line. Four out of 10 for DeChambeau. Um, other people scored zero, but didn't quite get four out of 10. I'll explain my reason, because DeChambeau was a rookie. Um, so I think, again, it's more difficult for a rookie. So there's certain you can make some allowances for their performance, but overall, four out of 10. Tony Fino, again, a rookie. Captain's pick this one. He returned two points, and I think overall he looked really nervy on day one, but I think he really stepped up. He had the best sort of, uh, net round going there yesterday, uh, gross round rather. Um, he, he was sort of six under when his game finished. He played some phenomenal golf yesterday and didn't see him giving Tommy Fleetwood such a hiding. But seven out of 10 for Tony, fantastic performance overall. Uh, Ricky Fowler, he, he returned a point. And again, he's now a player that's played in Ryder Cup. You're expecting him to step up and he failed miserably. His game was way off the mark. He returned one point and it's four out of 10 for Ricky Fowler. Dustin Johnson, exactly the same for me. World's number one golfer and just did not perform on that level. Four out of 10 for Johnson. Brooks Kopka, again for me, played really well. Didn't look a great team man, seemed to play all his games very much as an individual, but he did play well, can't knock that. Point and a half for Kopka, uh, seven out of 10 as far as I'm concerned for his own individual performances. Going to Reed, um, I mean, Reed's, when he played, when he's paired with Woods, I mean, he was atrocious. He was literally all over the place. He managed to pull a great round together yesterday and he put a point on the board. But again, expecting more things from Patrick Reed. Four out of 10 for him. One of the stars for me for America and underused was Webb Simpson. Golf course suited him, found fairways, putted well, played very, very well in the games that he was given. He returned two points and seven out of 10 for Simpson. Jordan Spieth, Massive star for the American team for me on every level. Seems to be a team player, seems to want to get, he's got a lot of enthusiasm and energy to get all that team bonded. And he's got great fighting spirit. He really is, you know, he's a great 
match player. Don't know what quite happened yesterday. Allison got a bit of a run on him. But overall, Spieth's performance with Thomas was brilliant. So uh, it's eight out of 10 for me for Jordan Spieth. Then we got on to what arguably without doubt was the star man for the Americans. It was Justin Thomas. He played fantastic. He returned four points. Uh, and, you know, again, he's just got that, he had that drive to get the American team going. Him and Spieth as a pair had that enthusiasm. For me, nine out of 10 for Thomas, bearing in mind his performance yesterday in the singles as well. He, you know, it doesn't have to be about fantastic golf as it was yesterday with him and Rory, but he was able to get that over the line and get that point in. But it's just, like I said, it's the driving enthusiasm which seems to be lacking from so many others of the American team. Um, Bubba Watson, I don't know, Bubba just doesn't, as much as I like Bubba Watson, he doesn't seem to be that interested in the Ryder Cup. And half the time when I listened to him, he didn't seem to care whether they were winning or losing or drawing. I don't, I don't know, that's the opinion I got. Uh, he returned a point, uh, so it's a four out of 10 for him. And the last one was Woods. And Woods, I do not know what happened. I mean, it was like whether it was just, again, physically too demanding for Tiger, whether or not it came just that week too soon after all the euphoria of the week before, I don't know, but he played pretty poorly. But the biggest thing for me for Tiger is, again, it's this ability to play as part of a team. His Ryder Cup record is atrocious for a player of his standing. When he played with Reed, um, they almost did not speak to each other. And I do not understand how that works as a pairing especially as the, the top man leading from the front. If I was playing with somebody like Reed who was struggling like he was, surely some words of encouragement were needed. Someone needed to galvanize the team, but the body language was so negative. It was incredibly low for Tiger. Um, I've given Tiger three out of 10 and he turned no points. I've actually scored him more simply because he, again, he, he fought hard. The only one thing I'll give as an individual, he fought hard and he did his best because he played on whatever it was, the Saturday was it um, afternoon with Reed. I mean, it was just a complete, he played on his own. Um, so I'd score him slightly higher, but it's just, again, the team ethic is, is unreal. It's hard to watch, to be quite honest at times. Right, on to the successful European team, and it was successful in so many ways. I'm gonna start off with Rory McIlroy. Didn't have his best Ryder Cup, there's no doubt about it, but he is part of that team. He's part of the, 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 the main crew that's in there that drives it all forward. He still returned two points and I'm giving Rory seven out of 10. Hatton, Tyrrell didn't play. And again, rookie, difficult to do. He returned the point. He was so disappointed yesterday with his performance and uh, as an individual. But again, lots of reasons why he performed well. And again, massive exceptions to the rookies. Seven out of 10 for him. Ollison, rabbit in headlights on the day one sat around for a couple of days and then come out with a blistering performance yesterday against Spieth. Did not see that one coming. And again, seven out of 10 for Ollison. Brilliant. Norrin again, it just looks like it's just a, at times that it's hard um, when you're not used to being in that environment. I don't think anyone's used to it. Um, but having been there before, it clearly helps you out. And Norrin, he returned a point. The end there, I just, I never understand why the games go on once the result is finished because it always there's a celebration going on and you've got players who are left out there who are not part of it. And I did feel sorry for Norrin. However, the way the whole, the put at the end was just an absolute brilliant end for it all to kick off again on the 18th green. So made up for Norrin, seven out of 10 for him. Then it's on to John Rahm. John Rahm wasn't at his best. Explain later again about all kinds of things that's going on in his life and, and you could see the massive relief when he bagged that point against um, against Tiger, um, which was a fantastic match. Again, lots of great quality and then some not so great quality. But John Rahm again, seven out of 10 for John. Paul Casey, one of the captain's picks, return a point and a half, eight out of 10 for Paul, steady Eddie. Uh, really, again, some good pairings, plays good in the, in the pairs games and again, uh, yesterday against, was it Kupka in the end there? They got a half, didn't they? Fantastic finish there. Uh, then another captain's pick, um, Stenson. Stenson was phenomenal. The Iceman returned three points and he was just, a, it's amazing how these people who've been there and done it just do not get phased. And uh, again, very well played from start to finish, eight and a half out of 10 for him. Uh, Rosie, next one up. He didn't return the points we used to and perhaps didn't play as good as, but he still had a good good um, return of two points. Eight out of 10 for Rose. 
then we're then getting up into the the big players for me at a weekend uh, apart from Stenson who I've just missed uh, Stenson was also one of the big players you got Poulter captain's pick and my god that lad I whether you love him or hate him as an individual I mean this nickname a postman and he delivers it is it, it's true I mean if I was if there was a 12 foot putt and it meant life or death for me and I had someone to choose to take that putt I'd pick Ian Poulter because he just he loves it doesn't he he just loves to be in that environment he thrives on it and uh, like i said that enthusiasm and energy that he drives through the team is is brilliant to see it really is and uh, eight out of ten for pilts um next up sergio garcia an absolute blinding captain's pick like i said doubts from my mind why he was picked no form at all and he just absolutely played fantastic three points um, 8 out of 10 in terms of how I rated his performances uh, just brilliant just brilliant just to come in there he knew he must know what goes on in the media that were people that were doubting him uh, leading up into it so that's extra pressure and he just loved every minute of it uh, what I read and hear again about how he is in the changing room and the dressing room he's just a great character to have in there and again brilliant brilliant performance right top two we know who they are Tommy, Tommy Fleetwood. Well, amazing. Uh, a rookie that came out the blocks on Friday morning and just didn't look back. I mean, he played some amazing golf. The partnership was fantastic, if we know who's coming next, but his partnership was amazing. Well, what happened on the Friday, I don't know, uh, Sunday, blown away a bit by uh, Tony Fino. Um, Maybe it was a bit too, uh, one too many for, uh, it would have been nice to see him get the five points there for Fleetwood, but either way, absolutely fantastic. But again, the enthusiasm and joy when he won that trophy there and how he celebrates with everybody. He's a proper people's person. He connects with the average golfers out there and they loved him, they really loved him. Nine out of 10, Tommy, I'm afraid. He got a point deducted for not getting that five out of five. So 10 out of 10 goes to the top man, Molly Molinari. My God, did he play well. A little fella, massive heart, absolutely fantastic start to finish and um, really fitting that the game ended there as it did, which, uh, yeah, five points for Molinari. Didn't do anything wrong, really, did he? No, no, no criticism whatsoever. So, amazing. That's my scoring. Um, getting down to the sort of what went wrong, uh, obviously, for America, I think, first of all, we've got to look at the captain's picks. They were disastrous uh, they were absolutely disastrous in terms of performance from um Fjorik, uh dishon boo zero return mickelson zero return wood zero return tommy fino two points um so yeah i couldn't be any worse and not just that i mean mickelson should not have been anywhere near the golf course looking at the form he was in i thought leading up to it that someone with phil's capability in the match play environment pulls rabbits out of hats in terms of uh, up and down from nowhere. That's how I sort of seen it before it went in, but he was absolutely so far off the mark, wasn't he? Um, it was almost as if it needed a phone call uh, to Fjordic and say, listen, Jim, I'm just not up to it right now. My game isn't there because it just seems so far off the mark. Um, then you go on to uh, Bjorn's picks and you know the complete polar opposite, Garcia, three points, Pilts, two points, Stenson, three points, Casey, one and a half points, nine and a half points, they contributed to whether it was as a team or against the two points that came from the captain's pick. So that was obviously a massive, massive difference. I'm not too sure, again, maybe some comments down below, who perhaps um, Fiori could have gone with instead of those people. But for my mind, it was a massive difference, uh, clearly, I think, anyway. Then the golf course itself, I mean, the Golf National in France looked absolutely amazing. Um, it's a type of course that I, I, I love um, personally, and um, I thought it looked, the, the way I look at it is this, it's, it's an opportunity for them to showcase a golf course that now I want to go and play. Having watched that, I just cannot wait to go and see it. So it was a great match play venue as well, all that water, risk and reward, and obviously, Bjorn set the course up extremely tight in terms of how narrow the fairways were, um, which turned out to be, again, a masterstroke from Bjorn himself. Um, I'd be a bit surprising, really, in the sense that, again, preparation from the American team was that an issue. 
Um, you know, Justin Thomas came over and played it and played well in the rounds. I don't know the stats in terms of how many people actually played the course itself, but the preparation didn't seem great um, from Team USA. I don't know whether, again, it was, I don't know the logistics around why they perhaps couldn't do that, but it played a major part. They definitely struggled around that course. And as we've seen from the rough, it was penal. You just could not get out of it. Oh, well, I say I couldn't. I mean, some of the lads, are, they're so strong how they force the ball out. Of some of the lies they got, I do not know, but penal is how the rough is, uh, how I would. So the end thing is always the, the analogy is this, is why is there such a difference between the team mentality? Because that's the big thing for me watching from the outset. It's the team mentality, um, you know, win together, lose together. Every player on that European team seemed to have bonded as one. And the complete opposite from the American team, and surely that has got to be something that needs to be addressed. I don't know how. Um, I'm just looking back, because I'm going back through. You, you've got Thomas, Spieth, Simpson, Kupka, Fino. I would say they were the only players that performed to a level. For me, Spieth and Thomas, um, in terms of the driving enthusiasm that they bring to, the, to a team, uh, were the massive successes. Other than that, it still looks like it's the majority of players are individuals rather than team players. And surely that has got to be a, a major thing, I don't know. Or maybe it was just the fact that momentum went away from the Americans in the Saturday, uh, the Friday afternoon, and it continued into Saturday for the Europeans. And maybe it's just that, you know, the whole thing just got a little bit down and there was no, there was no opportunity for them to get back into the match. I don't know, maybe it just all got too much. But as ever, your feedback. If you're from America, then your thoughts on perhaps where it went wrong and maybe who the captain's picks should have been. Um, from Team Europe, again, just again, how you think it went, your thoughts on Thomas Bjorn as a captain, your thoughts on the lads that went out there and played. I think it's only positive comments that you're going to see there. Right, I'm going. Like I said, I just wanted a bit of a chat with it because I thought it was brilliant. It was a great weekend. Uh, thumbs up if you liked the video, thumbs down if you didn't. Um, what else do you do? You know, I don't know, you subscribe and all that palaver. I'm sick of asking all that, honest to God. The question, of the, I mean, if you're going to subscribe, you're going to subscribe, aren't you? It's that simple. So why I ask you? I do not know. Same with the like and dislike button, but I don't know if you have to ask. Anyway, I'm going. See you later.